So today we're going to talk about The Leopard, which is a great novel written by the Italian writer Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa. The Leopard was first published in Italian as Il Gatto Pardo in 1958, and it is a historical novel that chronicles the social changes in Sicily during the Italian unification in the late 19th century. As you probably know, Italy only became the unified nation-state that we know today with its uh, national capital in Rome in 1871. Before that, the Italian peninsula was divided into many independent states and the nearby island of Sicily, which is now an autonomous region of Italy, was independent until 1860. The Leopard is a fictionalized account of that process from the perspective of one of the aristocratic Sicilian families, the Salinas. I own this Italian edition by Feltrinelli, but the novel is widely available in English translation and indeed in many other languages. I've linked to the English edition in the description box for this video, by the way, so you can buy it uh, directly from it if you're interested. Now, The Leopard has an interesting publishing history in that no one wanted to publish it. The two largest and most important Italian publishing houses, uh, Mondadori and Einaudi, both rejected it. Finally, Feltrinelli uh, published it in 1958 for the first time, and the novel became a huge success in Italy. Unfortunately, its author Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa never saw any of that success because he died in 1957, the year before the novel was published. So let's do Tomasi di Lampedusa, who had a fascinating life, some justice, and talk a little bit about him before we go into his uh, masterpiece. The first thing you need to know about the author of The Leopard is that he was an aristocrat himself. He was the Prince of Lampedusa. In fact, he was the last Prince of Lampedusa. And this is relevant because we have a member of the Sicilian aristocracy writing about the Sicilian aristocracy. So we can say that he knew what he was talking about, right? Uh, we can also go as far as to draw a parallel between the author, the Prince of Lampedusa, and his book's protagonist, uh, Don Fabrizio, Prince of Salina. But more on that later. Now, Tomasi was an extremely educated man, an intellectual, a man of letters, and in his novel, he reflects on his own past, that aristocratic order of things that once seemed unchangeable, but which began to crumble with the Italian unification. And Tomasi not only belongs to that class, the aristocracy, but he's the last member of it. Tomasi is himself an aristocrat, but one from the 20th century. So, as you can expect, uh, The Leopard is a nostalgic novel. It is a novel about a world which doesn't exist anymore, told by someone who belongs to the rubble that was left behind, as it were. Now, Tomasi was born in 1896 in Palermo, Sicily, and Sicily was his focus, Sicily was his world and his subject matter. He wrote The Leopard late in life, between uh, 1955 and 56, and what is interesting is that the novel was rejected because publishers thought it was too old-fashioned. But when it was actually published uh, posthumously, The Leopard became a bestseller in Italy, and soon it won international acclaim too. Now, there is also a great movie adaptation by Lucchino Visconti, who, by the way, uh, was also an aristocrat, although uh, from the north of Italy, uh, starring Burt Lancaster as the Prince of Salina. The film, uh, which bears the same title, premiered in 1963, and I also recommend it. But let's go into the novel now, shall we? Um, the Leopard takes place during the run-up to the Italian unification, more specifically, uh, the incorporation of Sicily into Italy. And I don't know about you, but I do remember studying this in high school. I I'm just not um, sure, I just don't know if that is something that most people are aware of, Italian unification. Luckily, I don't think you need to know a lot about it to enjoy The Leopard, but it does help if you know at least a little bit about it. Uh, you should have at least a notion of what it was anyway and when it happened, more or less. But the main idea in the novel, I think, is something everyone can understand. Uh, the decadence of an old, deep-rooted aristocracy and its traditional values, and by traditional here I mean a Catholic, and its replacement by the kind of bourgeois values that were already prevalent in neighboring France and other countries at the time. Remember, 
that we're dealing here with the middle to late 19th century. But also remember that the novel was written almost 100 years after, right? So Tomasi, the author, has a historical perspective that the characters in his novel don't possess can't in fact possess, right? And we see that in how the narrator, the novel is a third person narrative, deals with the plot and how he reflects on the events he's narrating. Now, let's talk about some of the uh, characters. The main characters of the novel are uh, Don Fabrizio, Prince of Salina, who I have already mentioned, Bendico, the family dog, is also an important character and you'll see why when you read the novel. Uh, there are also all the other family members, of course, but the most important one after Don Fabrizio is his nephew, Tancredi Falconeri. So, the Prince of Salina represents the old Sicily, the past, and his nephew Tancredi stands for the future of Sicily within a unified Italy. Another key character is Calogero Sedara, who is the mayor of the town of Donna Fugata. He is a member of the local bourgeoisie who is the prince's opposite in almost every imaginable way. This character, Calogero, has a daughter, Angelica, who is beautiful. Uh, the New Italy, the New Sicily, if you prefer, is symbolized here by the romance between the prince's nephew Tancredi and Angelica the mayor's daughter. One of the best things about this novel is its dialogues. Um, the Leopard has amazing dialogue. If you want to see how a novelist makes the most of dialogue, you need to read The Leopard. A lot of it is quotable as well, and many people quote the famous line, everything must change so that everything can remain the same, which is first uttered by Tancredi, but then resonates uh, with the prince throughout the novel. There are also great memorable scenes here in The Leopard and through all of it we get a sense of how old, how important Sicily was and how all of that was coming to an end and what had once been a kingdom with its own flag, traditions, immensely rich culture was just about to become a mere region in a new and modern nation-state Italy. I think it is remarkable that such a small novel can manage to convey all of that and a lot more and do so as masterfully as The Leopard does. The Leopard is a slow-paced, very reflective, nostalgic novel mostly because we're privy to the thoughts of the Prince of Salina representing the old Sicily, the old world that is dying out. But is it really dying out? What does that quote everything must change so that everything can remain the same mean. How much of that old traditional aristocratic world and its values has actually remained? The Leopard is, among other things, a thought-provoking novel. But of course, this is just my opinion. Now I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Juan and I post a new book review every Saturday. The best way not to miss any of my reviews would be for you to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. This is all from me for now. I hope uh, that you are all doing very well and I hope to see you again very soon for another book review. Bye for now.